here we expanded the West Valley event from uh, what were basically a one-day event to a two-day event 7 to 11 30 p.m. on Friday and 10 a.m. to 11 30 on Saturday I think that was uh, fairly successful uh, we did the alcohol uh, through a third-party vendor uh, which is uh, G Texas which by the way I believe is our caterer tonight as well um, did the uh, solicitation for Navy Right sponsor for the Tamale contest and wound up with uh, Christine, uh, Christine, Christine, not, uh, the other one? Christine. Angelinas. Angelinas, yeah. Uh, we did use some savings that we garnered from moving some things around to increase the entertainment budget. Uh, we wound up booking Pat Green for that, and uh, that was wildly successful. For those of you who were here on Saturday night. Um, Council direction was not to do any cooking demos unless we could do it at no cost. And in fact, we managed to do it at basically no cost through a sponsorship that we had uh, with uh, Castle Hills. And so that's when that's why we had uh, and South Coast displays. We forgot about them. Uh, that also was uh, very successful, and we uh, plan on trying to do that again uh, next year. Uh, reducing the farmer's market to once a month wasn't really related to Western Day, but it was a special event that was funded, and since then, the council uh, eliminated that uh, through the budget process last August. And then, uh, kind of related again to the uh, holiday at the Hall Parade, we're trying to coordinate that with the Floyd Run, and we're going to talk a little bit more during this evening's discussion about uh, the holiday at the Hall event and uh, proposal from the OTBA about kind of re-initiating the Christmas stroll uh, that they used to run downtown. So we'll talk about that uh, under item number three tonight. Uh, Neighborhood Preservation Committee, uh, we had a workshop uh, subsequent to the retreat during the year, and at that workshop, uh, council directed us to bring it back to this meeting, uh, for this uh, <coughs> or 
workshop, so we'll have that on the agenda um, tomorrow, item number four. Stormwater. Uh, direction was to develop a methodology for the drainage fee. You'll see that um, tomorrow, item number five. Uh, this has proven to be fairly complex, as Donna will walk you through the complexities tomorrow. Uh, not sure there's any good way of simplifying it uh, at this juncture, but uh, we do have a couple different options for you to take a look at. Uh, you did also approve advanced funding for design of Regency Drives, uh, the drainage project down there off of Timber Creek, using a Gabby and Wall approach. That design is about 90 to 95% complete. Uh, we had a couple of uh, minor comments in a meeting with the engineers about 10 days ago, and they're going to make some revisions, and then we'll be scheduling a meeting with the residents to go over the design. <clears throat> the large issue there, of course, is that the owners are going to have to dedicate the easement necessary for that improvement. In some cases, the easement uh, lines are going to reach very close to the houses. Uh, the, that raises the issue of what we will or will not allow on the surface of the easement. Uh, the reason they have to come so close to the houses is because of the tiebacks associated with the Gabby wall. Uh, the tiebacks are reaching in toward the bank, and so we need to make sure the easement covers the full distance of the tiebacks in case we have to maintain them or do something with them. Uh, but that means that they're not going to be able to use the backyard for, for example, a pool. That's just not going to be a possibility. And it varies from house to house as to how significant those easements are going to be. And with the uh, erosion on that, is there any way to put it up there? That well, that would be a different form of construction. Uh, basically, the Gabion wall is going to do some of that. But the Gabion wall is going to try to adhere to as much of the natural bank as possible. The current natural bank. Yeah, the current natural bank. There is going to be some backfilling associated with that. So in some cases they'll actually have a little bit more usable space, but it won't be usable for certain types of things, like a pool or one of the big questions, for example, is just the surface use for like a patio or a uh, storage shed. A storage shed, something like that. Can they can they do that? Is it something that's movable or not that big of a deal of a place? Uh, that may not be a big as big of a problem as something that was a much more permanent structure. For example, we wouldn't want them extending a deck all the way out to the above the water or something like that. We're trying to take advantage of that area that they previously controlled because that would be the more substantial structure. Um, construction funding, of course, for that is has not been determined at this point in time, but it is one of the projects that you could uh, deal with through the stormwater utility, and we'll cover that again. Uh, kind of a different part of the creek, the Timber Creek Acres uh, direction was to apply for any kind of floodplain funding that uh, is out there. We have, and unfortunately, it's just never been, uh, never risen to the top of the federal list. And we'll continue to do that whenever those funds are made available. Uh, sales tax options, I think you're very familiar with this. Uh, improve moving forward with the 1 8th for both fire and police. Scheduled the election in November, and that was, uh, of course, very successful, and uh, we'll be implementing budgets for that later on this year. Yeah, the first challenge is coming in court. Uh, sign ordinance made several changes. You can see those there. Uh, council passed the ordinance subsequent to the retreat. Uh, we've been implementing those. There's been a certain amount of Confusion is always uh, with the general public and businesses as to what the new rules are, and we've been working through that. Uh, and that's common anytime we change the sign ordinance. It's, uh, it's a new day that they have to adjust to, and so Eric's staff have been working pretty hard to make sure that everybody's familiar with the new rules. And when someone isn't, and they try to do something different, we, we correct them. Uh, trail master plan, uh, we scheduled the adoption of that, uh, which occurred on May 2nd, 2011. And we've got the second piece of the park master planning process, which is the park and rec facility plan on this uh, agenda this weekend. Uh, the I-35 corridor plan, uh, this was related to the 407 project and the need to have a committee make recommendations for aesthetic themes as quick as possible. And, we had a workshop on that not too long ago. We talked about uh, what 
you wanted on the freeway and what you wanted specifically on 407, and, and we're in the process of implementing that with TxDOT or consulting with the PPA. Um, apartment recycling uh, direction was to negotiate uh, an agreement with waste management to include apartments to whatever extent we could, possibly with some sort of a minimum number of units threshold where they have to have you know, 50 units or more in order to be eligible for apartment recycling. Uh, we've basically tried to coordinate that with what we're going to be doing beginning this year, uh, which is the franchise contract renewal. The waste management franchise is up in 2013, and so we're just about to kick off the renewal process or the renegotiation process associated with that franchise, which covers everything from recycling to trash pickup, commercial, residential, the whole, whole thing. And uh, we're going to try to work whatever kind of agreement in for apartment recycling we can there at whatever cost is uh, that waste management is willing to do it and we'll have to see how that turns out. There will be a lot of different issues that we'll cover with waste management in that renewal process. This is just one of them. Um, there was no action required on the comp plan review. And then we spent some time on uh, Saturday going through uh, some SWOT analysis basically with uh, the kind of um, we developed this list of, of issues as a group, and the intent was really to come back and have the council fine tune that to seven or eight strategic priorities. Uh, circumstances uh, involved in primarily the turnover of the council during the year kind of precluded that, and that's something that we probably need to spend some time on doing uh, at some point in the near future, if at all possible, because we do have a and, and I'd like to spend some time uh, kind of working on what you think are the primary strategic issues or priorities that uh, you want to focus on. Uh, you've got the list here. You can see some of these items are going over in the agenda tonight. Uh, some of them are completely different and, and not mentioned anywhere on the agenda and might need some further discussion. Uh, and certainly you can do that during the, uh, the weekend if you wish to. I don't know if I would even necessarily point any of these out. Um, and in some cases, it wasn't entirely certain exactly what was the intent of the item or what the uh, issue was, but I think you can see that it covers a lot of uh, territory. So that was last year. And entertaining the questions you have that some of you were not here last year sitting at this table, so you may have some concerns or questions about that. I hope you answer or work your way through with the team. If not, we're going to move on to the main body of the agenda. This agenda number four is the aging, deteriorating neighborhoods, rental areas. We've got two items on the agenda this meeting that relate directly to that: the retail discussion and the uh, discussion on the uh, neighborhood preservation committee recommendations. Uh, both of those are dealing with that issue to one degree or another. Some of those threats, some of the weaknesses, they're, they're fairly common types of things that are always out there. No matter how good you might get on something, there's always a possibility that go downhill or turn into a, a problem. And so uh, well, public safety, for example, is listed as a potential uh, threat. Well, deterioration of public safety is indeed a threat, no doubt about it. But we don't anticipate seeing anything like that. And the council took some significant steps to deal with that by addressing fun financing through the sales tax. Uh, but we always have to keep 
function for any kind of signs that you're having issues in that area so you can address it as quickly as possible. Well, the purpose for that, for that SWOT analysis, is again to generate some primary seven or eight priorities. We use those priorities to develop departmental and staff goals and objectives throughout the organization. You can see these in your budget books when we get them out to you pretty soon. You can look at the old books, you'll see them in the old books as well. Uh, it, it drills down all the way into the activity level of the departments so that they are setting their goals and objectives and targets in a fashion that is consistent with what the council's priorities are. And we don't want there to be mismatches there where they're working on one thing that the council really doesn't care about. They're not working on something that the council does care about. So the best purpose for that would be spending some more time on that rather than doing that. So, uh, if no other questions, then Steve has the first item. This is a follow-up.